Well, I'm here today again with Tim Wildsmith. It's an honor to have you back on my channel. Tim is a uh, an expert Bible reviewer. <laughs> if you've ever watched his channel, uh, definitely go over there. And uh, yeah, you're you're a you're a Bible kind of sore, aren't you? Well, I've become one over the past year. Um, I think I told you last time I started Bible review blog kind of as a, a pandemic project right about a year ago and um, started checking out Bibles and reviewing them. And, and now I'm doing unboxing videos. I don't know if you've seen those and those have been really fun and I'm having a good time. Yeah, it's definitely, I don't know, connoisseur. I, I have a lot of Bibles sitting around me and I'm, I'm getting to check out a lot of different Bibles a lot. And for me, it's been really cool because the the heartbeat behind it was I wanted to help people find a Bible that they will love and enjoy using. And it's to the point now, Tim, where like I get multiple messages from people every week saying, thank you so much. You helped me find my like forever Bible. And I'm like, that is so, so fun to be a part of that and to help people. And I get to check out a lot of Bibles in the process. So it's pretty fun. That's awesome. Uh, when you, when you hear that you've helped someone find a Bible. My my experience has been that I've I've kind of led people to buy more Bibles. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, I've I've had people say to me, "Oh, thanks a lot. Now that you showed that, I want that one too." Exactly. You know? Yeah. So, kind of, yep. kind of, kind of goes both ways. But you also did uh, you you did uh, spill the beans yesterday. I think it was uh, about your attire for these videos. And, uh, that's right. You, you, you know, the truth is out. It sounds like, uh, you're only I've dressed my, up from, from the waist up, aren't you? That's right. I've got my cool, you know, jean jacket on here and I am wearing sweatpants, uh, <laughs> 100% of the time. If I'm in this house, my house, at, I'm wearing at, sweatpants. At least you're wearing pants. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. You know, Man. some people, some people are on Zoom calls in their boxers. You know, but, out. yeah, yeah, just having yeah. a good time. Yeah, yeah I, uh, yeah. Yeah, I have, uh, <laughs> I've gotten used to um, shopping for slippers online because I've gone through a couple of nice pairs of slippers over the last year, being at home so much, and so I'm trying to find the right ones. I have now the ones I have on now have like a little bit of a sole to them, so they wear they they hold up a little bit longer. You know, you're like really getting like Bible connoisseur slash slipper connoisseur. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the life of a YouTuber. You know, no only only having to dress from the yeah, but but you're just trying to be comfortable. That's that's yeah, you're just trying to be yeah, that's right. Speaking of comfortable, we're gonna be talking oh, that about that was good, Tim Frisch. That was a good I just, I just came up with <laughs> comfort print. Comfort print. And I got to tell you, when I asked you to do this, you actually uh, were the catalyst because I saw you did a video uh, about the NIV, uh, mm -hmm. an NIV Bible. And you mentioned the comfort print. And it got me thinking, oh, this would be a really fun thing to talk about. And I thought this is just going to be such a nice, positive topic. Yeah. And then like the last day or so on Facebook, all of a sudden out of nowhere, people started complaining about comfort print. And so, <laughs> so now, now I feel like we're getting into a controversial topic. Yeah. It's but amazing that was, how that was not the intention about stuff like this. Yeah, for it sure. Is, it is. Yeah, I, I, I guess know. I shouldn't be surprised because when it comes to, it seems like in, in, in Christianity, we, we can find anything to argue about <laughs> yeah. Yeah. even the no fonts joke. of our bibles <laughs> yeah i don't know if you saw i i did a review last week of the new niv side column reference bible and somebody on facebook started like commenting on the, the just the post where i said hey i got a new review out they commented like how they hated the typesetting and i don't think they know the difference between typesetting and typeface and then uh, the, the guy who started 2K Denmark, which I'm not sure if the folks watching this video know that the comfort print fonts are this special series of fonts designed by a company called 2K Denmark. The guy who started it, who's the head of it, commented to the person on the Bible Review Blog Facebook page to clarify something. That person clearly didn't understand who they were communicating with and like was kind of rude back to him. And I was I was like, oh, no. And I was like, I don't think you know who you're talking to. And and it was like, oh gosh, it, it, and they didn't really know what they were talking about. And I didn't want to step in and be like, you know, playing a teacher or principal. So I just didn't say anything. But yeah, people get fired up about stuff, particularly on the internet when there seems to be, you don't have to look someone in the face and actually have a real conversation, you know? Exactly. But yeah, but yeah that's a mistake that can easily be made in those Facebook groups. 
yeah. it's good for people to be aware that some of the people, uh, when we're complaining, it's, it's a lot of times some of the designers of the fonts, it's even the publishers, they're yeah. members of these groups. Yeah. That doesn't mean you can't, you can't, um, you know, give feedback or something and, and, and express an opinion, but you should be very respectful and be mindful of who might be listening. Absolutely. I want to yeah. actually start off, Tim, with um, sharing something about comfort print. Okay. Uh, just from, from Nelson's website here, just so That's people great. know what it is and what the purpose of it is. And I kind of want to ask this question to kick things off. And, and that's in your opinion, have they, have they succeeded in doing what they've set out to do with, with the comfort print font? And you know, it says I've, it's easy to, easy to read at any type size, invite your eyes to engage and linger in God's word with our Thomas Nelson comfort print type fonts uniquely created. And I, I won't read all those, but there's different translations. Mm -hmm. These exclusive family of fonts are expertly designed. Uh, they reflect the, the history and legacy of each translation and also use the latest in the art and science of topography design to create a smooth reading experience. So those are the purposes of it. Yeah. It actually has a, mul a multiple purpose behind it. So do you think that uh, they've succeeded? <laughs> I think that's a pretty, I mean, it's a pretty bold statement. It's a pretty mm -hmm. um, in-depth when you, when you really dissect that down and look what they're saying. And, and I would say, yes, I think they have because I, you and I just shared back and forth some videos. There's some really great content out there that these publishers have created that, that 2K Denmark has created about the process of creating the comfort print fonts. And maybe you want to put a, a, a link so some people can watch that and see there's these short videos that kind of tell you the story of how they came to this process. And so um, I, I, I think that they have you know, obviously, 2K Denmark is one of the world's leading uh, type foundries, which means they create typefaces, and they they know that business really well. And so, I think, yeah, they've done an exceptional job of. They know the history. They know um, the process. They know all the science, which there is science behind all this. They talk a lot about you know wanting to make fonts that make it easier for you to read because with a Bible, which is most translations have around eight hundred thousand words. And, and you've got to make it easy to read because you're going to be spending a lot of time reading it. And so they, they know about um, the, the fatigue on your eyes and how certain designs can make it easier and more comfortable to read. That's why they called it the comfort print. And so um, I think their design was to say, hey, let's make Bibles that really help the reader have a comfortable reading experience. And maybe it's not something that you're actually thinking about while you're reading. Oh, this is really comfortable. But because of that science, because of that expertise in designing uh, the typefaces, you're actually going to have a better experience reading it. Um, and I certainly think that in a lot of ways they've succeeded. I think we're going to talk about the different fonts for the different translations because they have a different comfort print typeface for the different translations that um, the HarperCollins brand, which is Zondervan and Thomas Nelson used. And some of them are, are more unique than others, and some of them are similar to one another, but I think that overall, they're, they're really well done. And watching those videos helps you notice just how much work went into the process of creating these and, and all of the little ins and outs of it. It's actually a really fascinating process. Yeah, and uh, it is, it's good to, to kind of actually see the story behind it to, to yeah. get an appreciation for, for what goes into it and why they did it. And that's why I wanted to read this, because one of the real important points here is that they, they weren't just trying necessarily to say, let's just come up with something crazy and different you yeah. know, to draw attention. I mean, yeah, of course, there's a marketing piece to this. Absolutely. But what it does say here is that they wanted to reflect the history and legacy of each translation. So if you look in the back of those Bibles, mm -hmm. it's really cool to, yeah. to read how they're tying in the design of that font with something about the history of that particular translation. And I think that would be something else for people to, uh, you know, if, if they're unaware of that, to actually look at that in those Bibles. And, and it might give them a little bit more of an appreciation, even if they still don't like the style, at least they'll understand the reasoning and, and, you know, some of the, the logic behind how that style was developed. Yeah. And that's something that if you go to, if, if your watchers know, you go to the back of a Bible from Zondervan or Thomas Nelson, and right before the maps, there's just a little note that says a note about the typeface and they give you the story of it. And it's just, it's very, like you said, very, very well-written, really insightful. And that's kind of a, 
a tradition in the publishing world at large. You can find a lot of like really um, uh, famous novels and stuff like that. And you go to the back or the front somewhere and there'll be a note about the typeface. That's a very traditional thing to do. Um, and so, yeah, it's cool that they've, they've done that and they've kind of given a nod to the design work there. It's, yeah, I think it, I definitely think it makes those Bibles stand out too, just because they're, they're trying to do something really unique. And I think that's cool. Yeah. And, um, and of course, when it comes to the uniqueness, you're, you're going to get different opinions. But one other thing sure. I'll say too about the purpose is I, I think they were really trying to go for something like it says here that you can read at any size. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's where we have to leave it in the hands of the experts because it's easy for us to kind of give our opinions, but yeah. they probably know better what's going to work at different sizes, what's going to be the best economy and use of space. And yep. what I found is people tend to judge a font purely based on uh, its size, but readability, yeah. and I think you've talked about this, has more to do than, than just with the size of the actual letters. It yep. has to do with the letter design, the spacing, and, and, and the leading between the lines. Uh, and so I think what I'm seeing in the Comfort Print Bibles is a lot of thought and care given to that, that reading experience it, it actually is quite readable even when it is smaller yeah. but you're dealing with a and this is something they bring out i think in their videos the bible has a lot of words in it mm -hmm. <laughs> you know yeah. so you have to create a font that's gonna uh you know really be good in its use of space and i think that's a big part of what they were trying to do absolutely i definitely um i think that when you you think about this the spacing and the words and the line height and all that stuff, they, they know all of the, as I said earlier, the science behind that that says this is what makes it a smoother, more comfortable, relaxed reading experience for you. And so when you design Bibles with that sort of typeface, it certainly helps. I mentioned earlier the difference between uh, type settings, typefaces, fonts. So, so I think it's important to know that the type setting is the way the, the page looks you know if it's two column single column where the references are how the page is laid out that's the type setting the typeface is the actual letters and how they are put together and things like that i, I believe that even typeface is different than font because font is like a specific weight or size that sort of thing and the typeface is the the broader category but like for example the person on my my facebook page said you know i don't i don't like this uh type setting i prefer one from another publisher, and they mentioned their typeface. Well, those are two different things. And, and one mm -hmm. of the things that um, Klaus, the guy who is the head of 2K Denmark, said was, well, we didn't design the type setting of the new NIV Bible. We designed the typeface. That th Those are two different things. Whereas 2K Denmark did design for Bibles like Skylar, they designed the type setting of the Skylar Quintel. So they, they do a, a couple of different things, but what we're talking about with comfort print typefaces is not necessarily how they're laid out on the page, but the actual uh, typeface themselves, how the letters work together, things like that. Yeah, that's really good information. And I will go on the record as saying that I'm going to mess that up all the time when I give my reviews. <laughs> I just, Absolutely. you know, I just throw terms out there and just, you yeah. know, I think people get the basic idea, but I agree if we're going to, if we're going to actually try to talk about these things, especially when we're giving criticism, it is good to be, you know, accurate in, in what we're actually talking about there. Cause you yeah. might be complaining about the overall look of the page versus the font the, in the, mm -hmm. you know, and those are two different things really. So yeah. very interesting. Glad you said that. I also have to say, I think it's a double-edged sword when, when they decided to do comfort print and we will get to looking at them very soon here mm -hmm. when they decided to do it, it, it was good in the sense that it drew attention to the fact that they were giving care into the new font. But whenever you name something Absolutely. and you kind of highlight its, its importance, you draw attention to it. You're going to also get a little bit, bit of reaction. And yep. I was thinking about this and I don't know if, if you would agree with it, but I was thinking there's, uh, there are other Bibles that probably have worse fonts and, mm -hmm. and looks to the fonts, but they don't get criticized because they don't have a sure. name. You know, yeah. I'm going to get, I'm going to throw one out there just for controversy. The Lachman foundation, people love the Bible. It's the, uh, the single column reference from Lachman. Uh -huh. And for years, people have talked about what a great Bible. And um, I think if you actually look at that, that whole design of it, that writing is so scrunched and 
and huh. the, the font people have complained about the new, new the new NASB font being too thin, but that font also is really thin too. So I know people are going to push back on yeah. this and totally disagree with me, but I think it's funny that people will complain about comfort print, but totally ignore another Bible that you know Absolutely. they love that one. But it, I would say that that uh, typeset is you know the whole design of the page is definitely. Uh, a lot more to complain about in my opinion <laughs> and you know tim i think part of it is just what we've become not to it's a pun to say the word comfortable but you know to to be what we've become comfortable with like for a long time as a college student and young adult i used esv bibles and they have that i can't think of the name of it off the top of my head but they have lexicon, their, all their bibles right? what's that lexicon yeah, lexicon. They use the lexicon typeface for most of their Bibles. And so I just became so familiar with it where when I grab a Bible like the Tyndale Select, which is the same thing as the the Schuyler Caxton, and they use lexicon, I, I'm immediately like, oh, I love this Bible because I'm very familiar with it. And so sometimes when we see something different, we're, we immediately go, oh, I, I don't like that. But actually, if you if you give it a chance and you spend some time with it and you allow it to become familiar to you, you probably will settle in and start to like it more. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought up the ESV because I think that they were they were a, a publisher that kind of really was trend setting a lot. And, oh, yeah. uh, and I actually had someone somewhat recently tell me they don't like the font of the ESV because it it looks too. Uh, uh, antique, I think, might have been the word they used, which interesting. is interesting. I've always yeah. loved the 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 ESV font. I think it looks yeah, it looks really good. I think good. it's kind of a clean, not modern, but a very clean classic font is what it looks like to me. Yeah, and I think and Lexicon is. I don't think Lexicon. I, I could be wrong about this. I don't think Lexicon is just the ESV Bible. I think it's been around a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I think too that uh, fonts are are meant to be reflective of of the style of the translation the esv Absolutely. is more of yeah. a formal translation and the sure, lexicon yeah. just has that classic look like you said i'll tell you another font i'm going to complain about okay. but it's not being used now was actually the holman christian standard bible for a while uh -huh. in its late in its later years uh switched okay. to a font that i didn't like nobody complained about it that i remember or yeah. I didn't hear a lot of complaints, but it wasn't called anything. So, sure. <laughs> you know, it didn't have a special brand name on it. So I guess it kind of went unnoticed. Also, the Holman Christian Standard Bible isn't, um, it wasn't the most popular uh, translation, sure. in, especially in that iteration of it. Now it's actually become more popular since they updated it to the Christian Standard Bible. It's really so, interesting. I, I mean, the more I think about what you said a couple minutes ago, like, I wonder if people would talk, I don't, you're, they, they wouldn't, I don't think people would talk about comfort print and complain about it or gripe about it nearly as much. If, if Thomas Nelson and Zondervan had just put the fonts out there and never said anything about it, you know, like the fact that they, they say on every single piece, this is a NIV comfort print NKJV comfort print. I think that that makes people recognize, and they are, they're trying to, they're, they're using it to sell Bibles to say, we've, we've gone the extra mile to do this, which is great. Um, I wonder if they had just never said anything about it and just changed it. If people would be, um, so quick to, to dismiss it or complain about it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, uh, it's, it just made me think about, uh, the, the first printings, you know, the Gutenberg, I think had the anniversary. I saw that on Google. It was like the anniversary mm -hmm. of the Gutenberg press. Maybe I wonder if people complained about fonts back then, <laughs> you know, this first Gutenberg books and Bibles, like what kind of font is this? <laughs> I'm sure they did. I yeah, think back then did. they were probably so excited <laughs> to have a printed copy of the Bible that they would have gone for anything, but I do know I've done some some Bible history, history of Bible translations and publishing. I've, I've looked into that a little bit recently, and there are definitely some moments along the way where the change in the style and how how they laid everything out or adding in verse numbers, those were like big deals. And the public at large oftentimes was like, we love this or we hate this, you know, and that's the, kind of the success or the, or the failure of, of a new translation or a new printing of the Bible can often depend on what does it look like when you open it up. Oh, that's a great point. And I, and I, again, would say with the ESV, I know last time we talked, you mentioned the different editions that are available. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think, yeah, the variety and the look of them definitely helped with the, uh, with the success of, of the launch of the ESV. And Absolutely. 
Yeah, I agree with that. 